today we're going to speak about uh, the cherubs of Gan Eden. Why does the Torah tell me about the cherubs of Gan Eden? Were they, remember that song, devil or angel? What were they? What kind of angel, and why should I care what they were? We know the Torah is God's GPS. The Torah is not a history book. What is the message of the uh, cherubs of Gan Eden? What are we supposed to learn and take from it? So that's today's topic. Cherubs of Gan Eden, devil or angel. Next Sunday, we have a very interesting topic. Did Noah's Ark contain dinosaurs? Mm. Avram, did Noah's Ark contain dinosaurs? No. Well, stay tuned. That's a cliffhanger for next Sunday at 2 o'clock. Uh, we'll talk about that next Sunday, that the Torah does speak about dinosaurs. Nachmanides speaks about it, another great Kabbalist, and we're going to talk about the next Sunday. But today, let's analyze the verse that we read Shabbos morning. The paper's in front of you. After Adam Chavi eat from the forbidden fruit, what was the forbidden fruit? The Machlokas in the Talmud, the Zohar said it was an Esrog. But look at Pasi Chavdalet. By Igorish Esa Adam, he drove out the human. You see that, Avram, Pasi Chavdalet? Yeah. By Mikedem, Leganedin, what does Vayashkein mean? Vayashkein Mikedem, Leganedin, Esakruvim, and he placed the east of Ganedin, the Kruvim. What do I care whether it was east or west? What's the difference? There's Lata Cherev and the flaming sword, Hamishapechet, that turns over. What does that mean? Lishmor to guard as Derech Eitzachayim. What is the Torah telling me in this very cryptic pasuk? Now let's analyze Chava Vayashkein Mikedem. What does Vayashkein mean? What do they say? Vayashkein. Says the Targum Yonason. Fasten your seatbelts. This you didn't hear. The Targum Yonason says Vayashkein from the word Shechina. Shechinte lekadmin de Eden. According to Targum Yonason, Mikedem doesn't mean east of Eden. Why should I care where else? Vayashkein Mikedem lagan Eden. That when Adam was driven out of Gan Eden, the Shechina was waiting for him, Mikedem le Gan Eden. Before you go back to Gan Eden, after we die, 120, who escorts us back into Gan Eden? Who? The Shechina. You hear what the Targum is saying? We come from Gan Eden, after 120 years we go back to Gan Eden. Vayashkein mikedem le Gan Eden. The shechinta le kadmen de Eden, says the Targum Yonason, the shechina hakdosha will escort us back before we get to Gan Eden after 120. It's the same Gan Eden. Hmm? It's not the same Gan Eden. What do you mean it's not the same Gan Eden? I mean, there isn't any other. Where, where was Gan Eden? Zisel, where was Gan Eden? Where did Chava and, and Adam live? So the Archaim HaKadosh says that Gan Eden, plan A, there's a plan A, there's a plan B. The physical world and the spiritual world says the Archaim was like a two-story mansion. Beam me up and beam me down. So Gan Eden, there's a parallel world out there, which is called the spiritual world. There's a physical Gan Eden, a spiritual Gan Eden. So Adam and Chava were supposed to live simultaneously in both worlds forever. But when uh, Adam and Chava sinned, they created a chasm. How do you say in English, Adam? A chasm. Chasm is English. That broke the escalator. So now the only way to get from the physical world to the spiritual world is to the bridge that we call death. But that's plan B. Plan A was that Adam and Chava were supposed to live together in both physical and spiritual world. The Rechaim calls it like a two-story mansion. Beam me up and beam me down. But after we sin, God said, okay, we're going to plan B. Plan B is we're still going to get back to Gan Eden, but now you need the bridge that's called what? Death. Death. But what does Isaiah say? When Mashiach comes, Death will be swallowed up forever. Therefore, this will be a mess. Why is it a mess? Why? 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 Why?
מתים יחייאל ברוב חסדו ברוך הדיית שם תהילו so why is that איקרב יהדות אבא? because that's plan A plan A that the body and the soul are supposed to live together in both worlds simultaneously that was plan A but we broke it we broke the escalator but after 6,000 years the Mashiach comes God tells Isaiah, I will swallow up death forever. The Tikkun will have been made. And now we're going back to plan A. Where the physical and the spiritual world, the body and soul, are going to live forever. Okay? So, why tell us about these Kruvim who are waiting for us in Gan Eden? When we die, Akurish Kaviyochol, the Shekhinah escorts us. And who's waiting for us there? The Kruvim. Now what are the Kruvim? And why should I care? Now, the strange Rashi over here, Rashi is highlighted in yellow, et Kruvim, says Rashi, see that? Malachi Chabala. Why do you say English Malachi Chabala? Hell's angels. That's how you say. Malachi Chabala means hell's angels, angels of terror. Devils. But in Pashis Truma, the Kruvim are Kodesh Kadoshim. Here Rashi calls the Kruvim Malachi Chabala, angels of terror, or hell's angels. In Pashis Truma, these very Kruvim, where are they located? On top of the Holy Ark, the Kodesh Kadoshim. Where does God speak to Moses? Bibain Shnei Kruvim. So Rashi, how can you call them angels of terror when in Pashis Truma you call them, the Torah calls them Holy of Holies, Avram? Make up your mind. What are they? Devil or angel? You hear the question? It depends on us. Oh, it depends on us. It depends on us. What's waiting for us on the other side depends on what we did with our life. And this answers a very strange question. We're just coming out of Yom and Arayim, right? We say, Nasana Tokev Kedusha Sayom, the Malachim are trembling on the Yom Hadin. We say the Malachim tremble on the Yom Hadin. Even they are not uh, pure in your sight. How could, how could we say that in the San Antonio? Why are the Malachim nervous and trembling on the Yom Hadin? Rabbi Yaakov, they ain't got no free will. They ain't got nobody, literally. They can't sin. What do they got to be nervous about on the San Antonio that they're trembling and even they are nervous? The answer is... Malachi Elohim Olim Beyardim Bo. It's a Pasuk Mayetse. Whether angels of God go up or down, Bo. Bo with a Vav means what? Depends on us. We control not just our own destiny, but also the destiny of what? Malachi Elohim Olim Beyardim Bo. So Malachi Elohim have good reason to be nervous. Because their destiny, whether they are Kodesh Kadoshim, Achas Vishol, Malachi Chabala, depends on me and you and you and me. So therefore, Nisan Atokev, they have good reason to be what? Trembling, Trembling and nervous. So that's the Vashemta. Malachi Elim, Olim, Yordim, Bo. Where the angels of God go up or down depends on me. Rav Chaim Volozhin, he has a different source. The Mishnah says, Da mala mala mimcha. If you want to know what's going on above, what's going on above? Mimcha, Yael. We make the call. And therefore, there's an amazing Rashi. An amazing Rashi in Pasha Zoysa Bracha that we just read it. The Hebishur in Melech, the Sase Roshayam. Yachad, Yachad, Shiftei Yisrael. You don't have it on your sheets. But in Pasha Zayis Abracha, the Torah says, God was king in Yeshurin. Yeshurin is a poetic name for Israel. You ask anybody for directions in Israel, they tell you, Yeshar, Yeshar, Adasof. <laughs> We're supposed to be the straight ones, right? Who be sure, but he be sure in Melech. Says Rashi, when is God king in Israel? Says Rashi, when? Yachad Shifte Yisrael. Yachad, Yachad. Be'aguda Achat. V'sholem b'neihem. 
Who Malcolm says Rashi. When the Jewish people are united in one, and there's peace among us, then God is our king. Why is Achtut so important to God? Why is unity among the Jewish people so important to Hashem? So Rashi in Pasha's Oysa Bracha says that God can only be king on us, Abraham, when there's peace and harmony among us. Then God is our king. Isn't that incredible? That God says, if you want me to be your king, it's up to you. You have to be reunited and it feels so good. But when you're divisive, God says, I can't be king over you. So it's up to us to crown God. It's not over by Rosh Hashanah. Rashi is bracha. Whenever the Jewish people unite, we crown God. And Chas Shalom, we're divisive, we uncrown him. So incredible, so even God's destiny is what? On us. Isn't that incredible? I'm, I, Rashi, I couldn't dare say it, but Rashi says it in Pasha Zois Abracha. God is only king when Yachad Shifte Yisrael. Yachad, Yachad. The awesome power of a human being. Nasa Adam Bitzalmenu. Nasa Adam. Who's God talking to? Who is God? Let us make man. Banish. Who's God talking to? Let us make man. Says Rav Salavechik, that's Rashi. One down, 69 to go. Rav Salavechik said, God was talking to the human being. Nasa Odom B'Tzalmenu. Together, let's build the Tzalem Aleyhim. Me and you, and you and me. Rabbi, so happy he together. To he was speaking to our soul. Together, we shall create the Tzalem Aleyhim and develop the Tzalem Aleyhim together. Now, this is not a joke. The Rechaim HaKodesh says, why did God create uh, man before woman? The Rechaim said, if you created man, a woman first, man couldn't open up his mouth. So God wanted the man to get a word in, so therefore he created himself first. <laughs> Rechaim, I'm not joking. It is. Otherwise, he couldn't open up his mouth, you know? <coughs> therefore, he created man first to get a word in edgewise. Create the lady first, forget about it. You know, you, uh, Yosef, that's why you, uh, under the chuppah, the, the man breaks the glass, not the lady. Why? The last time he got a chance to put his foot down. Get it? So anyway, but uh, where were we? So what's going on over here with the Vayashke Mikedem Leganedim as Derech Eretz, Derech Eitzachayim. So the Zohar explains this puzzle that the Eitzachayim is a metaphor for eternal life. When a person dies, his neshama goes back to Gan Eden, back to the Eitz HaChayim. So the Kruvim are there to escort him back. The Shechina takes him to the Kruvim and then hands off. So what are the Kruvim? It depends on our behavior, right? They could be Holy of Holies or Chas Shalom. Remember the movie Ghost? They got that right. Pretty cool. What's waiting for us on the other side? Could it be? Kruvim? Devil or angel, we decide. The Kruvim were holy of holies, but when Adam and Chava sinned, they turned the holy of holy Kruvim into what? Malachi Chabala, the same Kruvim. And then when they did Shuva, the Kruvim again became what? Kodesh Kadoshim. We decide not just our own fate, but also the fate of the Malachim as well. Malachi Elhim Olim. The Yardim, Bo. Bo depends on us. Is there only one set of Kruvim or are there many, many Kruvim? Well, the Kruvim are the role model, but every person creates for himself his own Kruvim. We all have a personal Kruvim. There is a role model Kruvim that Adam and Chava had that are represented on the Holy of Holy in the Ark, but they represent every person creates for himself his own Kruvim. Kodesh Kedoshim, or chas v'shalom. It's actually a Mishnah in Ovoz Perik Dalit. Oise mitzvah achat, konelai praklit echad. If you do one mitzvah, you create for yourself praklit echad. How do you say praklit in English? Defendant. A defense attorney. A malach that will defend you for eternity. Over avera achat, if you do the one avera, 
you create for yourself a prosecuting angel. Our deeds live on. Positive energy or negative energy, we create or we destroy. The movie Ghost. Ben Zion, you see the movie Ghost? It's good to see it. Because this guy who wrote the movie must have learned this. What's waiting for us on the other side? Heavenly angels or chas shalom? Devils. But the good news is that if you do tshuva, you can turn the devils into what? Devil or angel, who sang that song? We make the call. Now, Rabbi, yes. does Kruvim and Malachim mean the same thing? Kruvim are a class of Malachim. Kruvim are a class of angels. The Ramah says there are ten classes of angels. Right. The Kruvim are one of the highest classes okay. of Malachim. The Kruvim. Is it Rabbi? Yes. Does not um, Kruvim have the the root of karov. No, it's a different uh, spelling. A different? a different spelling. Kruvim. Now in Aramaic, kruvim mean what? Children. Because the Gemara Chagiga said that these kruvim had partsufim shel yeladim zochar nekeva. Kruv in Aramaic means children. So the Gemara Chagiga Beni says that these Kruvim had the face of a boy and a girl. These statues in the Holy of Holies had the face of a boy and what's it all about? Yeah. Says my great Rabbi Yaakov Ganetzky, he says something amazing. He says the Kruvim had the face of children. Represent our children. Our children, if we give them a proper chinuch, if we attach them to Torah values, we attach them to the Holy Ark, Cecil. The Holy Ark represents what? The Torah. Then they're Kodesh Kadoshim. But if we don't give our children a Torah education, if we don't bring them into the Kodesh HaKadoshim of the Ark of Torah and Chas Shalom, children can become Le'elei Nuat, devils. Depends on the Chinuch. Do we attach them to the Holy Ark? What does the Holy Ark represent, Yehuda? Torah values. But not, and chas v'sholom, these kruvim can become, the children can become what? The drug addicts, lo yeleinu, or whatever. You just learned that you don't, you don't make a brach on a child because he doesn't come to children's Torah values, doesn't count for the He has to agree with the Torah values. Mm, I never heard of that. Uh, but every true. child you have is a mitzvah pruvu, but uh, you have to teach them Torah. Therefore, the first mitzvah in the Torah is to what? Ben Siyom, what's the first mitzvah in the Torah? Pruvu. What's the last mitzvah in the Torah? So the Shem Shavuahar says the purpose of having children is to teach them Torah. To make them Kodesh Kadoshim, not Chas V'Sholom Le'yaleinu Malachi Chabala. And therefore the Kruvim had the face of what? Gemara Chagiga tells us, page 13, they had the face of Zohar, children Zohar Nekeva. But getting back to the Kruvim, so the Rambam says this episode was written here to teach that belief in angels is a, a cardinal belief of Yahadut. The mice of the Kruvim are written here. We know the Torah doesn't tell me any stories, Benish. The Torah is a GPS. Why do we need the story of the Kruvim, says the Ram of Renabuchim, to teach that belief in Malachim is what? Ikra of Yahadut. What does God need Malachim for, Avram? I mean, a human king needs helpers. But what does God need Malachim? Says the Rambam. I remember I went to Buckingham and Cap. Buckingham Palace, and I saw the honor guard. So I'll put it in my words. The Ramah is saying, if a king has a huge honor guard, it gives more glory to the king. To the king. So God wants to impress us, says Rambam, to impress us. So therefore, he has this huge, what's the word, retina? 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 How do you say? Regiment. Regiment of Malachim to impress us, because the more honor guard a king has, the greater is the glory and the honor and dignity of the king. So that's one reason why God created Malachim. And the Rambam makes that an ikra of Yahadut. To believe in Malachim is an ikra of Yahadut. You get that? There's a problem here. Because if you read the Yid Gimel Ikrim, Animam Munishalema, that you say every morning, or some people say every morning, the last time I checked, Chava, was belief in angels there? Where? Mm -mm. And the Animamins. Animamin. No. Wasn't there. 
The Rabbam seems to contradict himself. In Mor Nevuchim Yehuda, he says, belief in Malachim is what? Ikra Yehadut. Therefore, the Torah records this episode. But in the Ani Mamins, the 13 principles of faith that every Jew has to believe in, the Rama Avram seems to have forgotten belief in angels. Not if you believe in God. What? Not if you believe in God, because I believe in God, I believe in angels. Because no, it's two separate things. But God created angels. Right, but so belief in angels. angels is an ikr of Judaism, says Rambam. He says that in the Guide to Perplexed. But in the Animamins, which he wrote, the 13 Prince of Faith, he seems to have left that off the list, Cecil. We have a Houston control, we have a problem over here. Now, to answer this question, we will ask, why is belief in angels a ikra of Yahadut? Why? <coughs> Remember I told you, we create our own heaven or hell, depending on our behavior. The Ramam didn't contradict himself, because the 30 principles of faith, one of them is what? Schar onish. One of them is belief in what? Reward and punishment. And the Mishnah says, if you do a mitzvah, you create what? An angel. An angel? And, uh, if you do a vera, you create what? Loyalainu, a devil. That's schar va'onish, it is yael. The Rabbi is not contradicting himself. In the 13 principles of faith, he writes schar va'onish. Belief and reward and punishment is ikav yahadut. In other words, whether I create an angel or a devil, chas v'sholem, depends on my behavior. So the Rambam is not contradicting himself. When he says reward and punishment, the Ikra of Yahadut, he means what? The reward that I do, what's my reward? An angel that I create. That'll be my companion forever. The Chas what's the Onish? What's the Onish, Ben A devil. A devil. devil or angel. So the Rambam is not contradicting himself. Schar onish, in other words, is what? What are the malachim? Kodesh Kedoshim? That's the schar. What's the onish? Loyalenu? Malachi Chabala. We create our own reality. Do you know that, Zizel? We create our own reality. Heaven or hell, we create our own reality. So the Rambam is not contradicted. So schar onish reinforces our belief in what? That the malachim are our schar onish. We create holy angels or chas v'sholem. What's the other word? Hell's angels? But the great part is that we can also do, we can do what? We can do tshuva. The great part is that we can do tshuva. It's never too late to do tshuva. So we can turn those devils into what? Angels. By doing tshuva. Tshuva mehava. So you see the awesome power of a human being. This is what Kabbalah teaches. That we control not just the physical world. Are you getting this? But also what? The spiritual world. Dam alamal. If you want to know what's going on above, Mimcha is up to you. God gave the human being Chava such awesome power to control not just the physical world. What we do has, what's the word, cosmic, rep cosmic repercussions. <clears throat> this idea goes so far that if you read the book of Kings 1, you see Shloim Melech built the base of Migdash and he built two huge columns, Yochin and Boaz. When he went to the temple, Chava, you saw these two huge pillars made out of copper. What were they holding up? Nothing! Huge pillars. Look, King's one. Huge pillar coppers. One he called Yochin and one he called Boaz after his great-grandpa. Who was Solomon's great-grandpa? Boaz. Boaz married Ruth. Right? They were holding up nothing. Why did he do that? So the Gabbala teaches they held up nothing in the physical world. But they held up the heavens. What we do down here affects Shemayim. So when a Jew went to the base of English to Davin, or to bring a Korban, what did he have to have in mind? You see those two stranding pillars? They look like they're holding up nothing. But they're actually holding up what? The spiritual world. Little old me, 
I can hold up the spiritual world? Wow. Yes. Boaz and you are? One column was called Boaz. The other was called Yachin. What does Yachin mean? Yochin. Yochin means to prepare, I think. What? Yochin means to prepare. Right. This world prepares for the next world. What does Boaz mean? In him is strength. strength. Right? Boaz was 80 years old. He married a... Uh, Ruth was less than half his age, right? Former go-go dancer from, Bo from Moab. Right? Moab made Las Vegas look like a kindergarten, so he had a lot of strength to marry her. Right? And the Talmud says something very strange that Boaz, the chief rabbi of Israel, the Shofet, he was 80 years old. And Ruth was much younger, less than half his age. Right? And uh, he died on the honeymoon night. The Medjus says he died on the honeymoon night. So wagging tails would say what? Chief rabbi dies on honeymoon with former go-go dancer from Moab. Hmm? What a way to go, right? But the Medrash says, Boaz was supposed to die the night before. He was 80 years old. He lived a full life. He was supposed to die the night before. But God kept him alive. Yiddishal Baruch, one extra night to plant the seed of the Melech HaMashiach in the womb of what? Root, and then beam me up. But wagging tails, Avram didn't know that. They said, oh, shame on him. Couldn't marry a Bess Yaakov girl. He had to go to, to Las Vegas to marry a former Moab, the symbol of immorality. Rabbi. Served him right, right? But Hashem kept him alive one extra night. See, we don't see the whole picture. We don't see God's plan. So we have to picture. The other part of the picture is that Boaz's wife died. That's right. Boaz's wife died, died, died the day when Ruth came back. That's right, Ruth came back. Boaz's wife died, that's right. Boaz's wife died, right? So whatever happens, it's all what? Hashem, he's in charge. Hashem is in charge. It's just amazing. Whatever happens, Hashem is in charge. Adam. He called their name Adam. The human being is made up of what? Of a godly soul and of soil. So why didn't God call him, the morale asked, why didn't God call him the Shama? Hmm? God breathed Nishmas Chaim into him and the man became a Ruach Mamala. What does a Ruach Mamala mean? A spirit that talks. So why did God call him earth man or soil man? Should have called him what? And see on, I'm a soul man. Or Chaim HaKodesh has that. I mean the morale, Slicha. We have a Nishmas Chaim. God breathed into us Nishmas Chaim. Part of God himself. And clothed this godly soul in an earth body. So why call us Adam? Why not call us Nishama? Morel asked that question. I mean, we are Ruach Mamalala. We are not our body suit, that's just the space suit that the, the Nishama wears. So why not call us Zisul Nishama? As Shama Kalbach called his daughter Nishama. Didn't call her Earth, earth Lady, called her Nishama. So our, the Morel explains, Aram, that he's called Adam from Adama, soil. Soil is pure potential. If you cultivate the soil with a lot of TLC, the soil can give off a beautiful garden with luscious fruit and orchard. But if you neglect the soil, it becomes a junkyard full of weeds and insects. So we are a godly soul put into the Adama to cultivate the goof, to raise up the goof with a lot of hard work to make a beautiful garden out of it. Or chas v'sholem. And the chief rabbi, the former chief rabbi of the British Empire, Jacobowitz, said something amazing. He said, this idea of the morale is actually found in the two English words. How do you say dirt in English? Soil. S-O-I-L. How do you say neshama? S-O-U-L. The difference is I or you. So he said, but the morale means soil. 
S-O-I-L. If you want to remain an earth man, you think only I, 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 I. I for myself. The tafkid is to take the soil and turn it into soul. Instead of I, Masha, S-O-U-L. I'm not only concerned about I, I'm also concerned about you. So we are soil with an, with an I. We're supposed to turn it into soul. Not just think about I, but think about you as well. To take the Adama and elevate it. A person can elevate his body up to the soul. That's the tough kid. There's a lot of potential there. There's a lot of hard work there. And therefore God called us uh, Adam, soil, and not soul. The tough kid is to take the soil, take the I, turn it into S-O-U-L, to think about you as well as all. Well, So we see how important a human being is. That Kabbalah teaches that there's a hidden world, there's Olam Nistar, there's a parallel world, and that's called the matrix. There's a physical world, there's a spiritual world, which is parallel. There's parallel. So the Rambam wonders, why is life after death called Olam Haba? What does Olam Haba mean? The world that comes. What do you mean world that comes? It exists parallel to this world. So the Rambam asks, why is life after life called Olam Haba? It's a world that comes, it exists parallel, parallel worlds. So the Rambam says, it's the world that comes to a person beyond that. When a person dies, he enters that world, like the fifth dimension. Olam Haba, it exists now, but when a person leaves this world, he enters that parallel world that we call uh, Olam HaNeshamot, Olam HaEmet, Olam Haba, Olam HaEmet. This is called Olam HaSheker. Fake news, right? It's a lot of fake news. In Olam HaEmet, there's no fake news. The mask comes off. Now the Zoya says something amazing. He says that the physical world, God made yesh me'ayin. How do you say that in English? Yesh me'ayin. Ex nihilo, something from, something from nothing. But the Zoya says that the spiritual world is ayin me'yesh. Are you getting this? Ayin me'yesh. Nothing from something. The olam haba, the spiritual world, the world of Neshamot is Ayin Meyesh. God wants us to live in the physical world. But to be aware that what? There's a parallel world. A world of eternity. A world of the soul. Where our loved ones are waiting for us after 120. What does King David say when his baby died? Hmm? In Samuel, Samuel 1, what does he say? How did he console himself, Ben Sion? When his baby died, when the first child that he had with the... He said, I will, he will not come to me, but I will be going to him. That's how he consoled himself. I will be going to him. I will going, after 120, I will be going to him. That's what King David said. That's how he consoled himself. So we have to understand that there are these parallel worlds. The Olam Anistar. The Olam Anistar. There's a pasuk in uh, Tilam, Hashem Tzilcha. God is what? Your shadow. What does that mean, Hashem Tzilcha? God is your shadow, right? Psalm 121. Whatever we do, positive or negative, causes a reaction in the Olam Anistar. The shadow is a reminder. Who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of man? Shadow, no. So the Zohar teaches, why does God call himself a shadow? In Psalm 121, says the Zohar, the shadow reminds us that whatever we do in this life, positive or negative, causes a reaction in the Olam star, the English word mystery, Olam star. The shadows remind of that idea. Whatever we do causes a similar reaction in Olam star, like your shadow in Shemayim. Every action you do has a similar reaction in Shemayim, positive or negative. The Gemara in Chulon tells us, Ben Sion, Eina malachim amm shira lamala, Gemara Chulun says, 
Angels have no right to sing praises to God up there until what, Cecil? Until we sing praises to God down here. We control their destiny. Malachim have no right to praise God unless we praise Him down here and then they get their cue. You're on. But they can't be on until what? We are. We are. Ain't Malachim armim shira lamala ad she Yisrael armim shira lamata because Hashem tzilcha we control their destiny. Heavenly angels, or God forbid, hell's angels. Da malamala mimcha. Question. Da malamala mimcha. We make the call. Yes? The question I have is, uh, yes? about we have to sing praises to God. Right. Is that the same as pray, praying to God? Praises to God or prayer to God? Prayer to God. Is the same as praising God? Well, praising God? praising God. Before you pray to Him, you have to praise Him. That opens the door. Is look at the Shemon Esrei. That's what I'm before saying. you look at Shemon Esrei, set up that way that before we ask God for what we need, first we praise Him. And after we praise Him, then we get into what? The checklist. Right? Now, let me ask you, Vincent, does God need my praise? What is God? Does God need my praise? <coughs> what? I Who said that? Maybe. Shelly said maybe. We need it. We need it. The only way that mind the Shema can bond with God for eternity is by praising Him in the physical world. It's not doing God a favor. We're not doing God any favor. I'm doing mind the Shema a favor. To me, to be reunited and it feels so good for eternity. I have to praise God down here. It's for my benefit, not for him. It's all for my benefit. So when Yaakov wrestled with the angel. Who was he wrestling with? You want to wrestle? He's wrestling with the sun. Or the eight, uh, Don't we all wrestle? You want to wrestle? He's, res he's wrestling? The Ramos says he was wrestling with his Yetzirah. All of us wrestle with our Yetzirah. You win not. some, you lose some. Right? And the angel had to go before dawn because he had to go praise his divine. If I'm reading it right. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. He had to go before dawn. The angel said, please release me, let me go. I got to get that in, come on. <laughs> right, Abraham, he said, please release me. Because I have to sing Shira. So if you don't sing Shira, you sing Shira tomorrow, right? What, what's going on over here? He had to sing Shira, so let me go. Well, what's, what's going on over here? He had him in a full Nelson. I mean, the angel's not a physical being. And, w and why did he have to sing Shira Dafka today? Why not last week or next year? What? No, he said today. Rashi says, Rashi said that this is my day to sing Shira. Batter up. Now pitching. Why Dafka this day? Why not yesterday? He says Raslavechi something incredible. He's sitting down, right? He says something incredible. This is the Yetzahara that we all wrestle with. We all wrestle with the Yetzahara. The Yetzahara was created what? To help me achieve my goal. Because no pain, no gain. Without the Yetzahara, we're stuck in neutral. What makes a person great, Chava? The struggle with the Yetzirah. No pain, no gain. The Gemara Navoy Dezorah says, when Mashiach comes and God will remove the Yetzirah, it says the Tzadikim will weep. Why will the Tzadikim weep when God removes the Yetzirah? Said the Mashiach. Why will the Tzadikim weep? Because what made them great? Struggle. The struggle. Without the struggle with the Yetzirah, you become uh, stuck in neutral. Game is over. The game is over. It's the struggle with the Yetzirah that makes a person great. No pain, no gain. So the tzaddikim will have what to weep about. Because without the Yetzirah, you cannot progress. You're stuck in neutral. It's the struggle that makes us great. So Rasavechik explains, when Yaakov defeated the Yetzirah, the Yetzirah said, now it's my turn to say Shira. Because until that time, no one had defeated the Yetzahara in such a high degree as Yaakov Avinu. So the Yetzahara says, now I can say Shira. 
Mission accomplished. The Yetzirah's job is to make us great. Through the challenges and the tests of life, that makes us great. Ezi Gibor, HaKovesh is Yitzro. So as I've explained, the Malach, the Yetzirah, now it's my turn to do Shira, mission accomplished. No one had ever struggled with the Yetzirah to such a degree and overcome him as Yaakov Avinu. So I have finally fulfilled my Tafkid. The Yetzirah's Tafkid is not to trip us up. It's to challenge us, to test us, by tripping us up, but by falling and doing tshuva. Sheva yipal tzaddik to come. The tzaddik will fall seven times. Emishlei says to come. Says the Baal Tov, that's not pshat, only when a person will fall seven times and he continues to get up, only then is he what? A tzaddik. Yaakov fell many times, right? He didn't do a nice tattoo, so he faked out his father and he faked out his brother. But he did tshuva for all of that. He paid a heavy price. So because of his failures, he kept getting up. So he was able to overcome his Yetzirah despite his sins. So he became Yaakov Ishtam. Of all three patriarchs, whose face is on the Kisei HaKovod? Whose face? Only Yaakov. Only Yaakov Avinu's face. Despite all of his failings. Because he turned the sin into a win. He turned the sin into a win. So we're called B'nai Yaakov. We're not called B'nai Avraham. We're called B'nai Yaakov, B'nai Yisrael. So this is our challenge that despite our failures in life, we can't, we shall overcome. Who sang that? They got everything from us. We shall overcome. That is our message. But what we do down here has cosmic repercussions. There are two parallel worlds. It's a Pesach and Kohelas. We just read in Sukkot. Zel umat zeh oser lehim. Zel umat zeh oser lehim. The soil Hashem, the soil Azazel. Two identical goats, right? There's a Yetzir Tov and the Yetzir Ra, negative spiritual energy, positive spiritual energy. And before we do a mitzvah, the Kabbalists came up with a, uh, a formula, before we do a mitzvah. What do we say before we do a mitzvah? There's a, sp a certain paragraph that we say before we do a mitzvah. What do we say that? In the Milchon of Zuman, the Kaya Mitzvah Sasei, and what do we say? That our mitzvah will perfect not just the physical world, but the spiritual world as well. That's pretty incredible. The awesome power of, of a person, of a human being, to cast a giant shadow. Hashem Tzilcha, to cast a giant shadow on not just the physical world, but also on the spiritual world as well. Mida Keneged Mida. Now, it's just amazing that uh, they cried on that night, right? The Maraglam came back, the Maraglam came back, and the Jews cried. What night was it? When they came back, what night was it? Tishabov. The so Uran Tanya's 29 says, that night was Tishabov. So God said, you guys cried for nothing, I'll give you a good reason to cry. So that night was Tisha B'av, and that became a, the Chorban Beis Hamikdash. By his vision, by Shani. What is God taking revenge? And I'll take revenge. You the understand this, Gemara and Tainus? Alta Laila Tisha B'av Haya. Omer Kodesh Baruch Hu. Atem bechitam lechinam. You cried for nothing. Vani koveil lechem bechiel adorot. Now I'll show you. Now I'll give you a reason to cry. What is God taking revenge? Was it tit for tat? What's the message, Judah? What we do has cosmic eternal repercussions, positive or negative. So that crying that we cried that night, Cecil, we cried for nothing. So now God says, what do you want from me? You set these negative forces in motion. You cried that night for nothing. So now your ticking will be crying for something. 
It's not a punishment, it's a tikkun. We created that negative spiritual energy by crying for nothing the night of Tisha B'Av. The Maragam came back, they said, Piz Gazev is no good, right? They lied. So we cried for nothing. I mean, Kiyat uh, Moshe. I mean, Ashkelon. So we set those negative forces in motion. So God says, now you have to cry to make the tikkun. For every tear that we bring, that we cry, brings the Shia closer. Remember the Gemara in the end of Tractate Makot? Rabbi Kiva and his colleagues were walking on the Temple Mount, remember? And they saw terrorists playing soccer there on the Temple Mount. The foxes playing soccer, the two legged foxes playing soccer on the Temple Mount. So what happened? The rabbis cried, and Rabbi Kiva, what? He laughed. Why? Why did the rabbis cry? Because they saw what's going on. Rabbi Kiva laughed. Because the tears of grief will lead to tears of joy. Mido keneget mido. All tears of grief will lead to tears of joy. Now isn't it amazing that God is so uh, magnanimous with uh, emotions. When it comes to uh, sorrow and joy, why is God so economical? God gave us so many emotions to express, right? How does a person express great sorrow? How does a person express great joy? Tears, right? When Jackie Mason tells jokes, you can't stop crying. Mm -hmm. Remember Jackie Mason? Yeah. I gotta tell you this one. He walks into, a, into a Grossinger's dining room. Remember Grossinger's? Grossinger's, no? Yeah. For your time. All right? He sees the people, they're, they're reading the menu. The menu, the dinner menu, with such kavana. He says, guys, it's not Kabbalah. What are you reading with such kavana for? Yeah. you should damage Vanessa and Kippa with the way you're reading the, the menu. It's just a menu, guys, it's not Kabbalah. So, tears of joy and tears of sorrow. Why do we express great sorrow and great joy the same way? Why, Yale? God is so magnanimous with emotions. Why over here was economical? Why? To prove that whether it's joy or chas v'sholem sorrow, it's all what? It's all one. It's all one. It's all God. And that's actually summed up in Shema Yisrael. Why Shema Yisrael, Judaism in one sentence? Shema Yisrael, who are you talking to? The guy in the mirror. Hashem, what's Hashem? Yud ke vav ke, midas harachamim. Hashem is what? Hashem is what? Tears of joy. Joy. Elokeinu, what's Elokeinu? Chas v'sholem. Elokeinu is tears of sorrow. Hashem echad. It's all one. That's Judaism in one sentence. Whether it's Yudke, Vavke, Rachamim, tears of joy. Or chas v'sholem, Elokeinu. Tears of sorrow and suffering. Hashem echad. It's all one. That's Judaism. But I, can I see it? No, so I cover my eyes. I can't see it. I believe it, but I can't see it. So when I say Shema, I don't see how suffering and joy can be what? All one. I believe it, but I can't see it, so I cover my eyes. But Zechariah 14 tells us, Bayoimahu, Bayoimahu. Yashem Echad, Echad. On that day, God will be one, and his name one. So Gemara Psachim 50 says, now he's not one? Yes. Now he's not, what is Zechariah, Orthodox Novi? In that day, God will be one, and his name one. Now he's not one? Yes. So Gemara says, now he's one, but I can't see it. I see suffering. Innocent children, my 10-year-old baby boy had to die, and he was born sick. Terrible suffering. I don't see his oneness. I believe it, but I don't see it. But Zechariah 14 says that by Yomahu, what's by Yomahu mean? When we shed the bodysuit, looking back from the pers perspective of eternity, we'll see Hashem Echadish Machad. How even the sorrow was somehow what? Gamzulatova. Now I don't see it, I cover my eyes. But on Olam Haba, we're no longer trapped in our bodysuit. When the Shama is free to roam, 
Therefore, a dead person is called a niftar. He's released. So looking back, Zechariah 14 says, looking back from God's perspective, when we're no longer in our body suit, we can see how, how whatever God does, even what we saw as pain and suffering and evil, somehow was letoiv. Looking back from Hashem's perspective. Now I can't, he doesn't want me to see it now. Therefore, for a good tiding, I make tova mated. For a bad tiding, I what? Dilemmas. He wants me to see it as evil and suffering. That's the test. That's the challenge. But the payoff is after 120, the payoff is we'll see how even the suffering and all of the pain somehow was also a toy. Now I don't see it, I believe it. But in all of my bar, I will actually what? See it. see it. Won't have to cover my eyes anymore. What? The Kruvim? The Kruvim? Well, the, the, our, our deeds. Our deeds turn Malachim into Holy of Holies, or God forbid, into angels of destruction. Our deeds. We create positive our energy. The awesome power that God gave us, that's the Tzalem Aleyhim. To create or to what? To destroy. That's the power that God gave us by making us his what? His partner. His partner. The next Sunday we have a talk about did Noah's Ark contain dinosaurs? <laughs> next Sunday. Did Noah's Ark. Thursday we have a current events class. Current events in Aftorah. Next Sunday. Did Noah forget the dinosaurs or were they on the Ark?